are now. Good afternoon. Konnichiwa, as some would say in Japan. Today, I will be giving you the pleasure of learning about the colorful background of cosplay. Now here, in this classroom, who has heard of the term cosplay? Okay, not many. Okay, perfect. Today, within the next few minutes, I will be giving you the brief history of cosplay, what is happening right now, and what will be happening in the present future with events, and as a whole, what will be happening to cosplay in the future? As will it become more popular, or will it become a lost hobby? Let's begin. Now, while researching, I found a certain article by Ornament, who gave a further definition of what cosplay is. Cosplay was originally found in the far east of Japan, and it's a contraction of many words. Cosplay is a combination of costume, play, and craft. And what cosplay is, is dressing up or portraying a character from a video game, a Japanese cartoon called anime, or a Japanese cartoon, Japanese comic called manga. Now, with cosplay, there are many things you can do. And while cosplaying, there are many other terms that you sort of have to know in order to get along in, in the cosplay world. One major word that many cosplayers use is the term otaku. Now, according to dictionary.com, I researched it, and otaku is a person or a group of people who have a passion, enthusiastic, or even obsessed about Japanese culture, the anime or manga, also video games and movies. Now, I am a cosplayer and I am an otaku. This leads me into my short, my little story of a month ago, I went to Comic-Con. I don't know if you've heard about it, but it happened in New York, October 14th, 15th, and 16th. I dressed up and I was a comic book character. Now, looking around at the convention, this is my first time going to Comic-Con. It was also part of New York Anime Fest. So there was both comic book characters and there is also anime manga characters. You've, if you looked around, you saw Disney characters, people dressed up as Disney characters. You saw people from TV, like there's a lot of Doctor Who cosplays. I don't know if any of you have actually watched Doctor Who or not. There's comic book characters, there's superheroes. Not only that, that's from the comic book section. And if you went to, to um, the New York Anime Fest, there was manga characters, there was anime characters, there was Japanese culture, people dressed up as Harajuku girls, even. And between, if you looked at the convention, you would think that was the only thing of, us, that's how it should be. But there's actually different kinds of ways you can go to a convention. You can either go as an otaku, just seeing everything. You can go as a cosplayer, or you can go for photo shoots. That's what is different from American cosplay to Japanese cosplay. Japanese cosplay is more of a job than it is a hobby. In Japan, they would gather people to dress up in cosplay as various characters, they would make groups up of at least 50, maybe a little bit less, a little bit more, and they would take photos. They would do elaborate photo shoots, and that would be it. They would take their pictures, they would pose, and they would go home. That would be somewhat their job. And Compared that to America, it's very different. People in America who cosplay, they dress up, they personify their character that they're trying to portray, they act like their character, they get pictures taken like they're celebrities if the cosplay is good enough, and then they go about their day in that outfit, and they, they take pictures, they, they even can schedule their own photo shoots. And that was very interesting to me because I found that how separate the two were. Going back to anime and manga, like I was saying, it started way back when, when Disney first was around when he was alive. It, they were inspired by 
um, Disney himself. When Disney first started his animations, he made Steamboat Willie. Has everyone heard of Steamboat Willie? It's the old school Mickey Mouse. Okay. And Jap Japan saw that and they were inspired, so they started creating their own anima animations. And that led to the first anime. And from that point on, it has progressed. It has gotten so much more technologically advanced with how they started to make things. And that led to how popular it became. And with being popular, it came to America. It's also all over the world. It's in Germany, it's in France, it's in Australia, it's in Canada, it's in even Mexico. It's a global sensation that's hopefully getting more recognized. And some of the new or some of the most popular animes or mangas that are around can be Dragon Ball Z, there's Yu-Gi-Oh, there's Pokemon, there's Sailor Moon, there's Naruto, Vocaloid, Full Metal Alchemist. I can keep going and bore you, but I won't. There's also video games like Kingdom Hearts. There's Tekken or Street Fighter that you can see if you go to an arcade. And there's movies which are either human eyes, which are like the ring and the own, which are more of the horror, or you have the animated, which can be Howl's Moving Castle, which was based on an American novel. There was Spirited Away. There's also Ponyo, which was released here in America, all by a man named Hiao Miyazaki, who can be considered the Disney of Japan. And you can see how it's influenced back and forth. America influences Japan, and Japan influences America. So it's a never-ending cycle. And while cosplaying, there's many things to consider. There's economy. There's what you can afford as a college student. I know as a college student, there's not much you can afford because you're not working. There's also what you want to look for in a cosplay, leading into my next point of what you can do to further on gain better knowledge of cosplay. When picking a cosplay, you have to know how popular the character is or how um, how popular the anime or manga that you're picking it from, how you can personify it, how much you can put into the effort, and it's a lot of time and money spending on cosplay. According to Tokyo Pop and the Anime News Network, over hundreds of titles of anime and manga were sold within America. So that's thousands of different comics that you probably haven't even heard of. And they're continuing, and that means that cosplay is continuing to grow and grow. And with the comics or with the, the cartoons or anime and manga, you have a never-ending fan base, and you have a never-ending amount of material where you can pick a cosplay from. And with the new, there always is the old. And in a, with the recognition, according to the journal Continuum, there is something called the World Cosplay Summit which is everybody from different parts of the world, from France, from America, people are represented, uh, represent their country, and they go to a big convention, like it's huge, and they debut a certain cosplay, and their cosplays are intricate. You can tell time and money, blood has been spent into putting these cosplays together. And it's a very big deal, Some, they even win money for how, how well the cosplays are, as well as for the country that they're representing. It's very good recognition. It, with the recognition, you get popularity, leading into my, my closing, which is that it will never go out of style. And with the future, cosplayers are always thinking about it, whether it be a new cosplay or a, or working on their next project, or saving up money for a convention. It will not stop if the fan base and if the the fan base and if your passion is still strong. And Japan very is much an influence and we are an influence to Japan. And thank you. I hope you learned from my topic.